Hello, today we're going to access HTML form data with PHP, and we're also going to have JavaScript do our form validation in the HTML file. So first we're going to start off just by creating our HTML tags, an HTML tag, and the first thing we'll do is just type hello world just to make sure everything's working. We refresh, and I'm using my local host to um, run this. I'm going to have to uh, I have to have WAMP running because WAMP is going to have my Apache server and my PHP server that's required to render the RPHP. Um, so if you don't have that, um, you're going to have to install that before you can get to the PHP part of this session. So it seems to be working, so we'll continue. We'll start by creating our form. Again, we'll have to have a start and end tag for the form. And then we'll start creating a couple of labels and uh, input fields. So first label, we'll uh, call ask for the user's name. And then we'll have the input field. So input type, and the type is going to be text. And we'll also ask for label um, address. Then another input type of text. Quick test that, see what we have. See if we can have, have our form with our two input fields. Now, right now we can't identify between the two uh, fields because we do not have any IDs. So it's very important we we'll want to have an ID and a name. Um, for both these uh, fields to keep it uh, simple, we'll uh, name the ID and the name the same. So we'll have name for the ID and also name for the name. And for the address, we'll do the same. ID equals address, name equals address. Perfect. So now what we want to do is add a little scripting to make sure that both of these fields are typed in by our user before they can continue. So what we'll do is uh, create a JavaScript and to tell the browser that we're writing JavaScript we have to use our start script tag and our end script tag. There we have it. And then we're going to create a function called validate. So function validate And now we'll have to create a two variables. And right now we have um, two different elements, a name and address. So we'll, um, we'll get those values by creating a new variable and assigning it using a document dot get element by ID. And because I'm using uh, Dreamweaver CS 5.5, I do have um, the methods that are available. Uh, and I'm just going to click enter. To use this one and the ID for the first field is name I'll put that in quotes and then I'll create another variable for address again document got get, get element by ID address so we identified these two fields and now we actually want to uh, create our validation so we're going to create an if statement saying if name dot value so getting the value of that user's input equals blank we're going to send an uh, alert so using the JavaScript alert function please enter your name create another if statement but before we do that we're actually going to return false because we don't want it to continue to the next page so return false do the same for the address. So if name.value equals blank alert, please enter your address. You can see I made the mistake of putting the name in again. So this value is actually going to be the address. Again, we're going to return false if the address is blank. So very simple validation, uh, but get the point. 
<clears throat> and curly brace so that our validate function is closed. All right, now we have to actually call this in our form. So in our form tag, we're actually going to create um, uh, a method. It's going to be a method type get. There's two types you can use, a get and a post. And we're also going to have an on submit event that's going to call our function, JavaScript function that we just created. So we're going to say return validate. And now the part where we're actually going to uh, call our, H our PHP form, which is a separate file, which I'm actually going to call handler, um, we actually use in the action uh, part of the form. So we're going to say action equals, and I name my PHP file handler.php. So good. So we have the on submit property attribute and the action attribute of the form all filled out. So now I want to give it a test. Oh, before we do that, we need to have a submit button. So let's create a submit button. We'll create that right inside our form. So input type equals submit. Name equals submit. ID equals submit. And the value of our uh, of this input type is actually going to be the name of the button that the user sees in the button. We'll just also have the value as submit. Submit here actually works. All right, we're going to save that and we're going to give it a try. So we're going to refresh our HTML page and you're going to see we have the, still have the two fields. This time we do have the JavaScript running in the background and we have the submit button. So I click submit here. We do get our message, our validation saying please enter your name. Okay, so we'll enter our name. Submit. Then we get the address issue. We'll enter our address. One, two, three, street. Submit. And you can see we're actually taken to our PHP page, handler.php, um, since that was in the action part of our form. So we're going to go back. So we're back to our form. I'm actually going to put a breakpoint just to make it look a little nicer. And then I'm also um, going to add one more field called label, or sorry, called email. We're going to have three fields all together. And then we'll also want to have another validate for the email. So I'm just copying and pasting code and changing name with email just to be a little more efficient. So I have to rewrite everything. And then I'll do the same for the validation. So email.value equals blank. Please enter your email. All right, so we have our HTML form, our JavaScript validation, and it seems to be working, and we're successfully calling our PHP page. But now we actually want to grab that data that we're submitting in HTML via PHP. So we're going to go to our handler page, and we're going to start PHP by using this open caret question mark PHP tells the browser we're writing PHP code. And then we're actually going to say, create a new variable, name equals, and because we use the get type of the form, so you can see the meth method that we use is a get. We're gonna say get, and we're gonna say name. And then we're gonna create another field called email, another variable called email. Again, we're going to use the get type in the email. And 
and then the last variable is address get address all right so we just created these three values we're assigning the values of the of the form submission using the get method and we have the three fields name email and address and we're not doing anything with those variables yet so I'll echo those out let's say echo welcome I'll even put the name in there I'll do another echo with the breakpoint We'll give that a try. So going back to our HTML page, we're going to refresh because we added an extra field. We'll make sure the validation works in our email field, so I'll just type my name. Good, our email validation works. So my email address is brandon at AOL.com. My address is 123street. We're going to submit that, and we should pass the validation since we entered values into all three fields. Again, that's very simple validation. You want to do a little more on that for your website. But just kind of getting you an idea to how to use the three technologies together. Once we click Submit, uh, we made it to our PHP handler, and we actually do have the value of the name that we entered in the HTML page pulled into PHP and printed out for us. So cool. So now we'll go back to our code, and we'll also print the... Um, at the other values. So echo another line saying please verify that your email address is and then we'll add the email variable here. That'd be good. We're asking the user to validate that the input on the HTML page was correct. All right, I think that should be good. We'll save. Go back to our submission. Now, since we're using the get method, all the values that we have on the submission are actually up in the URL. So you can see that we have addresses 123 Street. Our email is brandon at aol.com and our name is brandon. So instead of going filling out the whole HTML form again, I'm just going to do a refresh because those values will still be up there in the URL. And good. So we have welcome Brandon. Please verify that your email address is brandon at aol.com and that your address is 123 Street. So I um, hope you learned a few things in this session. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and I hope you will uh, come back soon.